Hello everyone, it's Leo and it's time to talk about episode 4 of Magie Lumiere. What a gorgeous episode this was! And I might be repeating myself because I said this last week, but this was my favorite episode so far. <laughs> I think I've been saying this a lot, but what a great episode this was. I feel like everything was in the right place, especially the emotions, which really hit hard and I just loved it. But I feel like the one thing that called my attention the most was the spirit. Everything was super well done in a way that transmitted the emotions a lot. So this episode was a direct sequel of episode three. They continued the mission in the shopping district and it was time to actually put the plan into practice. And I feel like it was very nice because, you know, the plan for us that are watching, uh, the plan is very simple, but they need to create the magic. And again, it could turn into something very stale. I've said this in the past episodes of Magie Lumiere. I feel like this show is able to take certain things that can be very boring to the watcher and turn it into something cool, turn it into something exciting. And this happened again this episode. And I felt like the narrative was really smart in the way that everything was divided. There were other scenarios in this episode. And the, the other scenarios, they stopped appearing after the, the resolution was over. After the resolution happened. After they, they were able to resolve the situation. They only focused on the Magie Lumiere part of things. But then before that, there were other points of view, there were other situations going on. I really loved that. So we have uh, the, the president of Est, and he was talking about companies and people that are very idealistic. And those idealistic people, they act and they do not see profit in the first place. They there is the profit aspect, but it's not their target. It's not their goal. And they that's the reason why he did not call that person that he was mentioning to be part of AST. And that is a way of saying to us and showing us that AST is a company that prioritizes profit in the first... We've seen that last week, and now the argument just becomes stronger. And he also says that this person who is very idealistic, who's trying things in his own way, is struggling in the market of magical girls. We all know that he is talking about Shigemoto, but their relationship is still cloudy, and we also see a shot of them in the opening, so there is something there. But, you know, for now, things are very cloudy between them. And it's nice because... It's clear to us that Shigemoto is an idealistic man who is doing things. He has his own purpose on doing things. Everything he does has his it there has its own purpose. And you know, even the costumes that he wears and everything, but the the company itself, Magie Lumiere, has a purpose that is not profit. And I think that is that is a great thing. Uh, obviously, it's it, it can be a little unrealistic at times but there are companies like that they are the exception but they they exist there are bosses like him they exist and you know they're rare they are the exception but obviously when you're creating a show and you're creating a narrative it's nice to focus on things that are different on things that are not exactly the norm um and so at the same time we have may who is another magical girl the strongest one or the, the one that, you know, resolves things the most in Ast, the company, and she is resolving another case. At the same time, we have the Magie Lumiere magical girls uh, containing the Kais that are focused on speed so that they wouldn't leave the shopping district. And those scenes were cool, Girl, especially Koshigaya scenes. The Koshigaya scenes in this episode, they went really, really hard. And so um, that is a, those are two totally opposite scenarios. May goes into a restaurant that has lots of um, glasses and uh, memorabilia who are very rare and they do not exist in other places anymore. They're like exclusive. 
And so the man asks her to not break them, to take care of them in her mission in uh, keeping the Kais and, you know, capturing the Kais. But she says that's not the focus of her mission. The focus of her mission is to exterminate the Kais, and that is that. And at the same time, she says, well, that's very easy to resolve. If, the, if a glass breaks, insurance will take care of that. But that is not what matters the most in this case. You know, when you're talking about a rare item or when you're talking about something that has a sentimental value, the money that you will get that, that has the same commercial value as that something that is lost is not the same thing. Because money is... Money is important, let's not be hypocrites here, but a sentimental value or a rare item that cannot be substituted by money. It's a different conversation. And so uh, May does not care. I mean, she even takes that into consideration, but she tells him, well, I will try my best, but if something happens, not my problem. You know, so it, it is a different perspective than the one in Magie Lumiere. It's very nice that we have this other point of view. And I was very happy that we had a scene of the people from the shopping district. They are in a secluded place, in a safe place, uh, outside of the dangers of the Kais, and they start talking about how that place is important for them, how they have memories, how they have stories, and they have something that they do not want to lose in the shopping district. And I, that is the one thing that I felt was missing in episode three. We needed that point of view to enrich Maggi Lumiere's actions. Uh, for us to take that into consideration and for us to think that is important, we would need that point of view. And that point of view was stressed in this episode. And I felt that it was really great. We even have a little kid who was uh, very scared, but then she rest, She started resting assured because she knew, or an older person told her, that magical girls would be there to uh, save the day, basically. And so she felt like, oh, okay, magical girls can, uh, uh, can be a font of inspiration. They can be a source of inspiration. And then we go to the Magie Lumiere part of things, and, you know... We have great moments. We have Koshigaya and Kana, and they are trying their best uh, to stop the Kais that are trying to leave. And at the same time, we have the other, the other guys who are in the office, and they are trying their best as well to uh, create the new magic. And... Very funny, Midorikawa isn't really doing much because, you know, his job is another thing. So he gets his pom-poms and he starts cheering on the other two. And it's very nice because, you know, Maji Lumiere is this, the, the Maji Lumiere, the company, is this. You know, they have the spirit, they have the seriousness of it all, but they also have a lot of fun in what they're doing. And uh, Nikoyama is totally focused on the coding of everything and Shigemoto is very focused on the studying part of things and the technical aspects of things so that Nikoyama is able to code it all into magic. And when they are finished, it's very nice that Koshigaya is the one who takes this into her hands and she takes the matter into her own hands. But she gets a lot of help from Kana to be able to use the, the magic circle and when she does, I feel like we have one of the coolest scenes of Maggi Lumiere so far. The way she goes down with her broom, with a lot of magic around her, her hair flowing like that. Oh my god. I thought that the scenes that they were using magic to stop the Kai were already very cool. That one was able to top that. Oh my god. God, it was incredible. I loved that scene so much. And Kana also thought that she was very cool. And Kana was very impressed with everything that was going on, with the way they were able to create a new magic technique just with the information that they had. Oh, and I forgot, before that amazing scene, we had another great scene, which was when Shigemoto asked Kana uh, what was the biggest manhole in that place and you know Kana is uh, Kana's a computer basically her memory I would love to have Kana's memory 
girl, my memory is horrible. And then she, you know, she scanned her own memory. And the way they did that scene was very nice, very cool. Like visually, it was great. And the way she scanned the place and found the biggest manhole, I love it. It's just like the episode was able to highlight all the strong points of every single character. Oh my god, it was so cool. And then we had a huge blast of beautiful yellow magic. It was so pretty. And lots of people were able to see that. The ones that were in the car, the people from the shopping district that were secluded, and May. And, you know, for May, that was shocking because May never saw a beautiful magic like that. And that was the first time she saw that magic. I mean, that was the first time that magic was being used. And she was shocked. It is like a new world is opening in front of her because that is not how she acts. Will that be enough for her to change her ways or will that not change her ways at all? But what matters there is that they were able to cleanse the whole shopping district. And both Kana and Koshigaya, they were able to succeed in their mission 100% success. And they were very happy. Kana was very happy as well. And, you know, they were able to finish the mission and everyone were, was able to come back to the shopping district. And people were very surprised because they were not expecting to be able to return to the shopping district as it was before, with just minor damages that they would be able to take care of easily. And they were so excited about coming back and seeing what, uh, seeing that place that is so special to them still existing. And the way they thanked them with lots of presents, it was so cute. And you know, I love that. Um, we have uh, the, that scene that they were all thanking Koshigaya because she was gorgeous in that beautiful magic that she did. But then she was like, okay, I was the brawl. But the whole idea, the whole plan was made by the brains, who is this girl right here. And she showed Kana. Kana, every time that Kana does something good in Magie Lumiere, she feels valued. She feels seen and she feels listened to. And we can see that in her eyes. And it is so good having something like that at work. I feel like that is so important and we sometimes forget. We, we when we work hard, uh, we do not only want to be praised, okay? That's not what I'm saying because we have to remember that Kana does not only get her salary, she gets a commission for every mission that she does. And this is what motivates, I won't say it motivates Kana because there's another layer to Magi Lumiere, but you know, getting into the real world, as using it as a parallel to the real world, having, you know, working hard and getting like a portion of your work coming back to you um, as a commission, for example, is a good motivator, is an amazing motivator for hard work for sure. Uh, the different thing about Magie Lumiere is that they're actually saving lives, that they're changing people's lives with their magical girl jobs. And Kana could see that. People were so happy. They gave them lots and lots and lots of presents. They weren't even being able to carry them all. And everything culminated in that little girl who made that beautiful drawing of Kana and Koshigaya because both of them were a source of inspiration, a source of happiness to her. Both of their actions and the Magi Lumiere actions, let's not put all, only the two of them because there were five that were working hard for this to happen. Even though Midorikawa was just cheering, he was also important for the, he was the one who got this job for the two magical girls. And, you know, that culminated into showing that little girl a glimmer of hope and a lot of happiness. And I love that scene when they're coming back and kind of sees her reflection in, in the building. It is a very different scene that we see in the previous episodes that that happens again. But this time around, there's a lot more confidence. There is a lot more um, pride in herself as a magical girl at the same time that she understands how serious 
her job is, how serious being a magical girl is. And then they get to Magie Lumiere at the end, and that is another scene that I love. Again, Kana feels valued. Everybody there is happy for what they have achieved. And they are they were full of glee for that job so well done. And everything that the boss envisions for Magie Lumiere, they were able to fulfill by putting everything into work. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And I love that. And then at the end, uh, Shigemoto and Nikoyama start fighting because of the ribbon thing. And, you know, in the first three episodes, every time Kana saw that, she was like, oh my God, they're so weird. And she would get weirded out. Now she is just so into the Majilumiere vibe that she just laughs it off. It just starts to be normal. It starts to be fun for her because she knows that's just how they are. And you know, Koshigaya holds her at the end and she just says, well, that's why we love Maji Lumiere so much because it's so weird. That's why we love it. I love those five. They are the stupidest, most amazing goofballs in this world. I just love them so much and it's so good it it feels like so refreshing to watch a show like this because it is so different than um uh, it's such a different magical girl show and it brings such a warm feeling i loved it and this episode was really able to bring it i feel like the spirit of this episode was there you know it was there and we finished the episode with an amazing scene of them checking out what the president does at night. I just love that. It was so stupid. Oh my God. And I love Shigemoto. He is, he's the king. Okay. He is the king. I love him. And I must say, I'm very excited for next week's episode because one of my favorite characters is going to appear. At least I think it is time for her to appear because I did not think this episode would last two episodes, but I feel like the pacing of this was Perfect. Really, really good. I loved it. Incredible. Maja Lumiere is being everything. And as babies, this was my opinion on episode four from Maja Lumiere. Now I'm going to stop and go listen to Lady Gaga's new song, Disease. I love it. It is so good. Lady Gaga, I love you. You're the best. Anyways, babies, this is it for now. I'm going to take this little time to thank the members of the Magical Cinnamon channel. If you're a member, thank you very much for your support. And if you've watched up to now, thank you so much as well. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.